Good morning, everyone. It is now time for me to do a spiritual mind treatment to open the service up. So you can take a deep breath in. And if you'd like to close your eyes and relax and just release all the tension of the day. And let's know this truth together. There is one power, one presence, and one divine intelligence, which operates through each and every person who is a part of this service this morning. And we know, we recognize, we understand, and we accept this power and this presence for good as it operates through each and every one of us, blessing us, uplifting us, and inspiring us to be more creative, to know that with God, all things are possible. Today is a day of celebration. We celebrate the life of Reverend Joyce Jackson, and we do this with our hearts, our minds, and our souls. We are inspired from within to move out into life in a new direction, knowing that Joyce's memory is served by all who are present and all who are not present. Each person who is here is blessed, uplifted, and inspired. Each one then, recognizes that with God, all things are possible. Any inner resistance, rejection, or rebellion is completely neutralized, uprooted, and dissolved into the nothingness from whence it came. And each person who is a part of this community is not only blessed, but uplifted and inspired to move out into life and to know that God is for us. God is for each and every one of us. We know this to be our truth. We give thanks for it. And I give thanks for this celebration of the wonderful life of Reverend Joyce Jackson. This word is now released into the law of mind in action, where it is accepted and acted upon at once. It is done. There is a demonstration for each and every person of greater health, greater wealth, greater creativity, and more loving, harmonious relationships. The word is in the law. It is done. So be it. And together we say... And so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Reverend Loretta Brooks. And for those of us that those of you that just joined us, you're welcome. This is First Center for Spiritual Living. And we are 204 West 81st Street. And we are celebrating the life of Reverend Joyce Jackson. She was our senior minister here at the center. And um, before I invite Reverend Judith for the obituary, I like to, I just remembered something about Reverend Joyce. I remember when I came into the center where she was teaching a class with um, Reverend Judith and we're trying to print um, the handouts for the lesson and we're having some delays and she, was, she came in and said, Jimmy, speak to the printer, speak to the printer. I just remember that vividly. Let's welcome Reverend Judith, bride block for the obituary, Reverend Judith. Thank you and good afternoon, everyone. It was my honor to do the eulogy for Reverend Joyce in the funeral that her family had on the November the 12th, like a whole month gone now. Uh, so I'm going to read the obituary, which was done at that time by her nephew, Leon. And it says, Joyce Elise Jackson was born on March 31st, 1947 in Brooklyn, New York to William and Beulah Jackson. Joyce received her master's degree in library science and put her degree to good use as the best children's librarian the Brooklyn Public Library has ever seen. She joined the first Center for Spiritual Living. At that time, we were first church of religious science and was there for a long time and very much loved and respected minister. She was the official travel planner for the beloved circle of friends. Whenever someone said let's, she said go, and she did. We did. Aunt Joyce made a great travel companion. She was able to speak intelligently and with compassion 
to people from all walks of life. She told Rhonda stories about many of her amazing experiences in life. Joyce surrounded herself with positive people and stood up for female equality. During her lifelong career with the Brooklyn Public Library, she helped thousands of children be the best they could be, even if they didn't know it then. All of her colleagues respected her and she was the true boss lady. When she joined the First Center of Spiritual Living, First Church, she transformed into a better version of herself, if that was even possible. And she eventually became a minister. She loved the teachings of Ernest Holmes and broadened her circle of friends through the church. Those friends were a source of encouragement and love during her final days. When the spirit moved her, Aunt Joyce would dance like no one is watching. And she would also sing like no one was listening. Remember Dr. Hart? She remembered all the old songs. <laughs> um, Joyce is survived by one sister, Cheryl Hinton, one brother-in-law, Ronald Hinton, one niece, Rhonda Hinton, who I must say was her rock. One nephew, Linda Hinton, two grandnephews, Keith Hinton and Keenan Thomas, a host of cousins and beloved friends. Her brother, Michael, preceded her in death. And that's the end of the obituary. And can you see what's on the back of it? <laughs> and so it is. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Judith. Um, this um, is a celebration of life and it's, uh, we've entitled it in her words. And um, as I was coming up here, I remember another thing that Reverend Joyce will always say to me, Jimmy, you have everything within you and you can do it. Don't hold yourself. Um, this words ring so strong within me as I stand here. And um, I'd like to invite uh, the Reverend Dr. Greg Hart for um, his own um, lesson and introduction about Reverend Joyce, Reverend Greg. Uh, thank you, Jimmy. Um, Welcome everybody to uh, our memorial, our tribute to Reverend Joyce um, at First Center for Spiritual Living in New York. Uh, a special welcome to all of you who are here also. Uh, we're thrilled to have uh, Reverend Loretta Brooks uh, do such a stellar uh, opening treatment. Thank you. Uh, and all the guests um, in our morning service today, <clears throat> there were people interested in uh, this life celebration, because there's been many people who Joyce has touched in one way or another. So we've opened up uh, the broadcast to all the people who were uh, listening all over the country this morning. And I, I hope they're there because Joyce was a great woman and she did a lot of good in her life. Uh, I became aware that uh, Rhonda, who's Joyce's niece, was doing their own um, memorial, funeral, and we wanted to wait and do something different. And what we were able to put together was a really wonderful lesson that Joyce put together for us a while back. And it's all about words. Think of that, you know, she's a librarian, right? And um, she said to me once, you know, from the Bee Gees, and words are all we have. So we were able to take a, 
a lesson that's quite extraordinary. And uh, bring it into three clips. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I'm sure you will. Uh, so again, I want to thank all of you who took the time to gather here today. Uh, all the people that were at Brenda's um, uh, funeral for Joyce, too, is a testament to how important Joyce was to so many. As Jimmy said, Joyce was our senior staff minister here at the center for many years. And she was guiding us all in one way or another with her wise words and her counsel. Joyce loved the science of mind teaching, I think, more than anything, except possibly Rhonda and her family. Uh, and she practiced the teaching like few that I've ever known. So today, again, is a special tribute to her. Uh, as I said, she loved words. And so we preserved this, this uh, video that we have in three clips. Uh, follow, we'll follow it with a, a message from Rhonda, and then we have the Reverend Ian Taylor with us somewhere in the audience. I see him. Uh, I thought um, he mentored Joyce, but I know I got that wrong. Uh, she mentored Ian. Uh, and then there'll be time for personal sharing. So, um, but let's listen to our dear Reverend Joyce's uh, own words. It's... As I said, she says, it's words, and words are all we have. We'll have a bit of music in between. So there, let's start. And thank you all for being here. Good morning. I'm the Reverend Joyce Jackson. I am a staff mem minister here at Centers for Spiritual Living. Now I looked at the screen and I must tell you that's going to be the last screen <laughs> that you'll see for now. Um, one of the reasons being I, um, I was told about speaking um, Tuesday night. And the funny thing is I think I got the message a little twisted and I thought the topic was words, <laughs> the power of words. But when I saw the email on Friday, I found out that it is the language of religious science. So I said to myself, well, words are part of language. We can talk about language through the viewpoint of words. So I'm in sync and I hope you are in agreement with you, with me. So. <laughs> So that's why um, it's a difference, and I apologize for no, no screen. So we're going to do it the old-fashioned way with just, guess what, words. So, <laughs> so I'll start with a statement that I'm sure you all have heard. A lot of times the statements that we hear all along, they may not be totally true, but they prove to be true enough times for us to think about it and to say, hmm, that seems to work out. This is the statement that I'm sure you have heard. You are judged by the company you keep. Now, I'm sure you've all heard that. It's uh, not necessary always so, but what they are going, what they are saying is that you are influenced <laughs> by those that you are always around, by the way they speak, by their thinking, and by their view of life. And it's right that this is so. The human being is a social being, and most of us enjoy the company of others. So we have every right to be with people, every right to be surrounded, every right to, to be part of interactions one with another. But I say to you, if you find that the company you keep is something that is beneficial for you, huh, good. You're with the right companies. And I say companies because we all have different companies. But if you find that those that you are with are not uplifting you, are not allowing you to sing with joy, 
Then I'm going to um, give a statement from uh, one, of the, one of the books from the New Testament. It says, come out from among them and be ye separate. Now, why? Why would you say come out from among them? It's because you don't want that overall influence that is not beneficial for you to be something that is constant, something that you're always taking in. You see the negative and limiting effects of other people, how they see life, how they speak about life and how they speak about the world. You don't want that to be what is seeping slowly into your thoughts and feelings that we call consciousness. And then you begin to speak that as well, sometimes without even knowing it. But I have another statement that may lead us in the other way. And it's, um, I'm, I'm going to give a quote. One is from, uh, I'm going to say a person of wisdom. It's the Persian poet, Hyphus. He stated, the words you speak become the house you live in. Our words build our house. We can use the word consciousness as well, our environment. And from another wise place that's called the internet, I got this. The way you speak to yourself matters. So I say to you, you can separate yourself from others. And if you can't, because there are times when you're going to be in the company of others and you can't separate yourself from them, it's okay. As long as you know you're not going to let their thoughts, their words, their deeds, their ideas and views become yours. You don't want to find yourself trapped into their way of thinking. So I'm going to rephrase that quote that I, that I spoke of from uh, Second Corinthians. I'm going to say, come out from among their consciousness and be independent in your own thinking and in your words. We've divide, divided this into a couple sections um, because it was a longer piece. Uh, this next section, we will learn, Joyce will talk about the power of our words and the spiritual world being the cause of the material wor world. Words are very, very important. Let's see if we can start it, Anthony. So... I keep using the word, word. <laughs> How powerful is this that we call word? Well, I did some more searching on the internet and I, I found these studies that they made. Do you know in the literature in um, Western, Western Europe literature, ancient Western uh, literature, there's no word for blue. Throughout the ancient world in all the literature, no blue. As a matter of fact, someone did a, a study of Homer's uh, Iliad and Odyssey, and even in speaking about the sea, never used the word blue. The only place in the ancient Western world that had blue was ancient Egypt. And they were the only ones that had the color blue and used it. You see, words help us develop meaning to a concept and shows through words how these concepts relate to our lives. So what does this have to do with us enjoying life? I'm going to go to our textbook, 
Our textbook is written by Ernest Holmes, the founder of religious science. Our textbook is called The Science of Mind. And in the textbook, would you believe there is a subheading and it's called, strangely enough, The Purpose of Religious Science. And so in this subheading, Ernest Holmes states, the spiritual world is the cause of the material world, but only that world can appear to us which we are capable of perceiving. What that means is, as with the color in the ancient world and with the, the group of people today, if we don't have a word for it, we can't perceive it. Even if it's there, or even if it is available for us to discover and use. No word, no use of it. It doesn't exist. What words can be from the beginning of, of our thinking and our teaching, what words can be for us is a portal into more and more things that we can recognize, that we can use, and we can enjoy. So I'm telling the statement that words are very important. And now we're going to go into the next section uh, where Joyce will speak about words can awaken our awareness of the existence of the good that's in our life. And they can command the law to create along the lines that we desire. Let us continue to listen. Anthony. This is what our words are or what they do. They awaken our awareness of the existence of ever-present good, ever-available good. They keep us focused on our chosen good and allow it to flow into our, mat our material world. They steady us from wandering into non-spiritual ideas and non-spiritual words, such as too late, not good enough. Why do you think you can? You've already tried that before. Uh, and who do you think you are? All of those words that we have used and accepted, they're not words translating the good into the material world. They are words blocking not only the flow, but even us accepting and speaking them. So words will command that this creative mental law, that which is always translating our thoughts, feelings, words, deeds into form, it commands the, this mental law to create along the lines that we desire. And it also commands that that which is already an intelligence that is operating through and as us, lead us, guide us, and direct us as we do the outer work to move into the enjoyment of the good that we desire. Can words do all of that? Am I making all of this up? Well, our science of mind teaching says that words can do that. Back to the textbook, it states, the power of the word operating as the truth can do all things. There's one more. Okay, Anthony, go ahead and roll it. So what would you like to experience more in your life? You can think about it, but let's have a group think about it. And I'm going to choose for you to think along the, the um, area of wealth. 
And I chose wealth because I don't think anyone here would say, eh, I'd rather not. I'd rather not enjoy. So I don't care where you are on the level of wealth. You can say, eh, I, yeah, I, I can increase it and I can accept it. So I want you right now as an experiment for yourself and maybe a few of you would like to share. I would like for you to think of a word connected to the concept of wealth that you know is right for you, that you can embrace. Now I'll give you a little leeway and say maybe a two word phrase, mm, we're gonna stretch it to a three way phrase, nothing more, why? Because when you're forced to limit what you say and you understand that what you say is what is unfolding and flowing into your expression, you are going to think about the highest and the best that you can say. And you won't waste time with limitations and whatnot. Anything that you add on to anything might limit it. It may enhance it, but it might limit it. So think of a word that you can claim for yourself that you can accept to experience in the line of wealth in your life. And I would ask if there is anyone who is bold enough to speak that word. Oh, great. Yes. Yes. I believe the word I would choose is worthy. Worthy. Well, that is certainly wealth. In the back. And then I'll come to you, our friend. Uh, prosperity. prosperity, happiness, happiness. Abundance. abundance, the same one, yes, in agreement, yes, God. God, in our thinking of a greater ease and flow in living, think of the beauty of the words that the people spoke. And think that as you speak them, you can embrace and accept them, and you can be guided to move and do the right things in the right place in the right time so you can experience them. And all of this comes because we, in accepting that we are spiritual beings, existing in a spiritual universe, and remember spirit means to create, and having a human spiritual experience, meaning we are creating and we are experiencing our creation. All of this is taking place because we are using the concepts that we are developing, accepting, embracing, and we speak them as our word. This we can do. This is the main tool that is with us, is for us, is around us, it's within us, and it is in us. So I would like to end with a paraphrasing of a song, I think it goes back to the 1970s. And it's by the Bee Gees. Now you may not know who the Bee Gees are, but I tell you they had the song track for um, Saturday Night Living. Saturday Night Live, yes. John Travolta. Thank you. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know who the Bee Gees are. And here are some of the words. Here is how I'm going to end using their words. It's words. And words are what we have to make our hearts sing. And so in us, our lesson. Thank you. I hope you all enjoy it. Um, it's a beautiful ending, beautiful tribute. Words are all we have to make our hearts sing. Uh, we have a 
a short clip from Rhonda Joyce's beloved niece, which we'll play now. And then I'm going to ask Ian to come up. Uh, I'm Rhonda, Joyce Jackson's niece. I just want to take a minute to thank you for your support of Aunt Joyce and our family during her final days. Your love for her is shown through this celebration of life. And although we cannot be there in person, know that we are there in spirit. On behalf of the Hinton family, we thank you again for your treatments. And so it is. So it is. And now we have the Reverend Ian Taylor, uh, who uh, was a friend and Joyce was your mentor, correct? Yes, indeed. Nice to see you, thank Lovely. you. Dr. Greg. Reverend Loretta, Reverend Judy, friends who are present and friends online. Namaste, namaste. I am Ian. And if I were to use the vernacular, I would refer to Reverend Joyce as my sister from another mother because that's the close relationship that we developed over the years. So how did I meet the great Reverend Joyce? I attended my first Science of Mind service, Christmas Day, 1988. And in early 19, actually the spring of 1989, Reverend Joyce and Dr. Fran, who at that time was a practitioner, came to Princeton and Reverend Fran was the guest speaker. So the three of us connected at that point. And Reverend Fran brought flyers. She was starting classes in Harlem in the summer of 89. Classes in Princeton would not start until fall of 89. Well, the student that I am, I hiked it all, I hiked it to Harlem for classes with Reverend Fran, and Joyce would be there too. So we started these classes. Reverend Fran taught the classes. But now, understand, these were my first classes in the science of mind. So I'm there as a swallowing it up. And Reverend Joyce was my interpreter. <laughs> she is the one that was helping me fresh and new in this philosophy to understand what was being presented. So after spending all summer in Harlem, 125th Street, uh, taking classes, we developed, we developed a friendship, a close friendship, and we actually became buddies. Reverend Joyce became a constructive and beneficial presence in my life. As time went by, Reverend Fran, opened what was what the Creative Consciousness Center. Later on, she opened the Imani Center and Reverend Joyce and I were members of her advisory board. So the three of us became very tight and I was not teaching, I was attending, but Joyce and Fran were teaching Science of Mind. And so that went on for a number of years. And now what we are talking about, we are talking about the 90s. Now, Reverend Joyce, in addition to having a connection with me on a personal level, we had an official connection also. So around the 92, 93 period of time, our minister left. At that time, I was the board president. So as we know in our movement, no minister, board runs the church. I'm new in this whole philosophy still. Reverend Joyce was my mentor. She was my go-to person, not only in terms of how to help keep the church afloat, 
but how to protect, how to, how to provide healing work for our community. You see, at that time, Reverend Joyce was the, the head of the treatment department here. And so she was the one who would guide me. She did it on two occasions. First, when <laughs> our first minister left, and then a year later, another minister left. Now, by that time, I was a practitioner. So now she's guiding, guiding me and she's guiding the board. How can we keep the center going with services, with providing treatment for the community, the treatment request forms, all of the details and how to maintain the integrity of our center. So not only was she active in First Church, she was also active in Princeton, very active on a personal level. Ministerial classes started and all students were to perform service in ministerial in, in the center if you're in ministerial class. So I had to move from New, I had to come in from New Jersey on selected Sundays and serve here in the center. So there was someone who was supposed to do a service when Dr. Grayson had a planned absence and that fell through. And so when I showed up for service, who was there doing the service for the very first time? Reverend Joyce. Reverend Joyce saved the day, saved the, saved the service. The next class, Reverend Joyce showed up. You see, she never saw herself as being a minister. She never wanted to take the ministerial training. But the next class, she was one of us, one of our classmates. And so we all proceeded together very intimately, right? And then we went out, we did our, our cinema. Back then it was called Science of Mind 5. So we did our Science of Mind 5 intensive together. We did our our um, oral panels together. We did all of our conference together. But when I use the word we, I'm, I'm referring to the Reverend Joyce Posse, all right? So um, it was not everyone in the class. It was me, it was Reverend Judy, it was Theodora, it was Valerie, it was, um, Veronica, all right? So that, that was a group. At every conference, we were inseparable. At every CSL event, back then, RSI, we were inseparable. But in that group, there was a leader. There was an obvious leader, and that leader was Reverend Joyce. Everybody followed Reverend Joyce. We followed her wherever she led because she was our unofficial leader. And so in that context, I had one foot in one church and one foot in the other church. I'm following my ministers in Princeton and I'm following Reverend Joyce here in First Church. So Reverend Joyce went immediately into service as a minister. I did not. Um, we all went in, I think, in about three waves. But Reverend Joyce was in one of the first waves. So Reverend Joyce continued being active in First Church. She continued being active with Reverend Fran in the Creators Consciousness Center. And then we took the activities one step further. We decided we needed something social to do. So we created what was called Reverend Fran, all right? The 36 hour culture club, all right? And here it says intelligence at play. So we would um, every couple of months gather for a weekend, a weekend of food, fun, drinks and science of mind. Um, don't let anyone tell you that the spirit doesn't work with spirits. <laughs> right. So we'd have this 36-hour culture club, but, if, but the, the foundation of it 
was again, deepening our understanding of science of mind. And again, still being a new student, someone new in the movement, I'm getting to soak it up, soaking up Reverend Fran and soaking up, soaking up Reverend Joyce, learning as much as, as I can from them. So, I was especially grateful when in 2004, Reverend Joyce led the posse to, to Philadelphia for my wedding. The same gang that would always hang, hang out at conferences, the same gang came under Reverend Joyce's leadership. To say that Reverend Joyce was a creative genius would be an understatement. She was a unique, she was unique in her understanding of the science of mind and unique in her presentation of the science of mind. And she was a person who was also committed and dedicated to fun. I had lots of fun with her. Every now and then in talking about books, she would say, I cannot find this book. It's somewhere in my house, but I can't find it. I have to put things together. And I would say, oh, I'll come over and help you put your house together. Reverend Joyce would not let me within miles of her house. I think she had a secret. <laughs> all right. But for all of the years, that was a running joke between us. Hey, can I come over this Saturday to help you um, find the books? No, Ian, you can't. Not yet, Ian, you can't. I'll tell you when, Ian, you can't. And that was our whole life. The day never came. Uh, yes. So, um, I never use, I never liked the word death in the context that we use it. I like the word graduation. And so when we move on, I like to think this person graduated before me. So I like to think that Reverend Joyce graduated from this plane of existence before me. Reverend Joyce, one of her favorite words, or two of her two favorite words, divine ideas. In her mentoring, in her explanation, she would always be bringing me back to the divine ideas behind everything. She would, when, when she's teaching me, she would be monitoring, am I working at the level of form or am I working at the level of divine ideas? She was very, very conscious of the concept of divine ideas. So the science of mind text talks about maintaining a continuous stream of the same consciousness and self-knowingness that we now possess. It also refers to life as a continuous stream of self-conscious expression. And it further adds many planes of life and consciousness. So it talks about life in terms of a stream or streams. And in terms of planes of life and planes of consciousness. And the science of mind also says, when we put all of this together, it says that we die from one plane to another. And that's what Home us is dying. From one, we move in from one plane of consciousness to another, one stream of expression to another. So as I as I try to remain as the good student that Reverend Joyce fostered, I try to remember this. And this keeps me more in alignment with joy than sadness more in remembering a close friend that I, and I will use the word, have instead of had, in, instead of someone who was gone. And so 
the people close by. My little way. I have my CCC t-shirt that for many years we spent weekend. And so now I can say with a lighter rather than a heavier heart, farewell sister. Mm -hmm. And so it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you, Ian. That was beautiful. Uh, I'm going to just briefly share a few memories, and uh, uh, I won't spend as much time because I know there's a lot of you that want to share, and I don't know how many people are on the Zoom call, but we want to hear from anybody who wants to share. Uh, I came to New York a little over four years ago, and the first year here was a turbulent <laughs> time because there was so much change. And uh, First Church, First Center of Spiritual Living wanted to grow, wanted to evolve, it needed to. And uh, uh, Joyce and I would be at it. We're trying to figure out the best, uh, best way for the center to grow. We, we decided to start a, a growth group that met for the past three years every Tuesday night. And I'm here to tell you that Joyce, throughout her illness, except when she was the most sick, would be on those calls every single Tuesday night, right up until I think a month before she passed. Right, Judith? Right. She completely was interested in the success of this teaching and this center in particular. Uh, we now have upwards of two to 700 people watching our programs a week. And we're developing a prayer program and Joyce and Reverend Judith, and there's a group of us that are, we're trying to figure out how to meet the needs of a, a new generation, a virtual uh, membership. And she was very passionate about that and wanting us to get that part of it right. And uh, we still haven't entirely figured it out. Uh, but I would remember speaking to her a couple of weeks before she passed. And I, I knew that she was ill, but I had no idea how ill. Um, but she was a coach to me in many ways. Um, <laughs> uh, in the best kind of way, because she wants to keep it, she wants it to be real and good. And um, she was the real deal. So um, for all those things, I'm very grateful. Uh, I could go on many other things. Uh, but she was here to support. I knew when Joyce was teaching a class that I didn't need to worry about what was being taught. Um, my only coaching was maybe some new language and new terms, but she knew principle. She knew how to teach it. She knew what it was about, and she was very good at it. Uh, so now I want to go to, do you have a list for me, Jimmy, or am I going to start calling people on the, is there people on the Zoom call? Oh, we have a little collage for you. Then we'll call some names. Go ahead. This is some photos of Joyce with some music, I believe. Anthony, just the pictures, please. So you can't really read the text. Thank you. 
He has a screen. Usually, he puts up a screen of callers. But let's start with Loretta, too. And then Anthony will queue up the names for us. Come on. And, and we'll try to keep it brief so we get through to everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Greg. And to all of you today who are here, I just, you know, looking at the uh, lesson that was given by Reverend Joyce, it was such a wonderful tribute to her as a teacher. I knew Reverend Joyce Jackson for so many years. She was at my home with her dear friend, Lynette Tucker, who has also made her transition. But the thing that I remember about Reverend Joyce is that she really lived her life on principle. She really did. Her life was about being in principle, being grounded, and she had a lot of fun. She was a fun-loving person. And some of the memories that I have from so many years of being in the teaching they come back to the thought about the love that she had for her mother. She loved her mom so very much. Her mother's name was Beulah. And I remember being at a Silomar. I was at a Silomar with Reverend Joyce so many, so many years that we all go out there and we have so much fun together. And Reverend Judith will tell you, Judith and I got lost once. And, you know, we just, we always had so much fun together. It was such warm memories of Reverend Joyce. And as I, as I think back and I think about all of these memories, I recognize the blessing that she brought to each and every one of us. She was such a blessing, such a wonderful human being, her kindness, her stability. I would go to her and I would be upset about something. And within moments, I would feel grounded. I really would. She had that kind of ability to create a feeling of groundedness along with her spirituality. But she loved her mom so much. And I was telling the story about when she was with her mother, she would protect her. She would really be so, so kind to her mom. And I just wanna mention that because I think it's such an important part of her life. Her life was filled with love for people, love for spirit and love for this teaching. And I am, you know, I'm reminded of something that Dr. Grayson said, he was our amazing teacher and I will always shout his praises. And he said something that really spoke to me. And this is what I wanna share. He said, people aren't special. They only specialize spirit. And Reverend Joyce Jackson specialized spirit. Thank you. That was very nice. It was beautiful. Um, Joyce used to point something out to me, which I forgot to mention. She mentioned that she's been a minister just as long as I have. And uh, what I found out later, Reverend Wade and I were in the same ministerial class. And I believe that was the same class. Judith, is that correct? We were all in the same class the same year? So who would have thought Reverend Wade Atkinson, myself and all of you, same time, same year. Um, must have been a great class, right? Uh, let us go to Agatha. My goodness, Agatha, what would you like to share? I'm glad you're with us. Well, well thank, you. thank you, Reverend Greg, for, for asking me to say a few words. I'm a, I'm a new kid on the block. I only came in late into this teaching. But when I came into it, Reverend Joyce Jackson, she was such a person. She was so grounded in this teaching that she had certain things she would tell me and certain things so she would encourage me and show me why these things are so. And I'm so grateful for her encouragement and her teaching. And it really made me love science of mind. And as I say, I tried to emulate her by living and practicing these principles that she taught. I think she was a wonderful example to many of us. 
And for this, I thank you for saying these few words. <laughs> Thanks, Agatha. Always wonderful to have you with us. I believe, uh, I believe Rhonda uh, Joyce's niece is on the call. If so, I'd like to see if she'd like to share. Rhonda, are you with us? Hi. 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 I am. Hi. How are you? Well, nice to meet you finally in person. Right? Yes. Yes, indeed. How are you? Doing well. Good. 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 <laughs> Um, no, I just, I, again, I just want to really thank those, those that I know, those that I don't know for the support, um, the friendship that you have with Aunt Joyce. It meant so much to her. And especially during the final days, she drew a lot of comfort as she told me so many stories about the life with her first, the Center for Spiritual Living, but also with your friends, which really the relationships are the important things in, in our lives. Um, so thank you very much and for inviting me. And this was a very nice, very nice to see her speaking. I mean, I've seen her speak a couple of times in person, but that was really nice to kind of relive that as well. Um, but and I, and I wish everyone well. And again, thank you. Thank everybody for what you've done for me and, and on Joyce. Rhonda, we're thrilled you're with us. Thank you so much. Absolutely. OK, I want to go to our own Shirley Reed next. Shirley, how are you? Would you like to share? Shirley Reed, you sometimes. Now I'm unmuted. Now I'm unmuted. Oh, thank you for calling on me. Reverend Joyce was my friend, my mentor, my teacher. When she stood up at Lincoln Center to give a spiritual mind treatment, you could hear her voice reverberate all over the place. And believe you me, she was a wonderful travel companion. She took us all to Philadelphia to um, study and um, hear a sem seminar on um Emma Curtis Hopkins. And I can tell you that two of her famous words were state on principle, 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 and truth. Joyce lived truth, and she made us all feel very warm and happy. We just loved her. We still love her. And today, I know it's morning in heaven. She's singing, she's dancing, and she's teaching on principle. So thank you, and no mistake to everyone. Uh, thank you, Shirley. It's wonderful always to have you with us. Uh, I'd like to ask Sherry to come up. Sherry, I believe, is Reverend Ann's wife. Are you with us? Would you like to come up and say hello? Or share? It's, oh, they have here. I'm sorry. I'm reading from the page. Lori, are you, are you the person we're looking for? What? It's been too long since I've seen you guys. Sorry, Lori. <laughs> we have a little bit of a confusion that we're going to clear up. Jimmy, you gave me a name. What, uh, Lori, come on up. And let me give you a proper introduction. It's Lori, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> this is Lori, so I don't think Ian has any other wives that I know of. Go ahead. <laughs> I know of either. <laughs> Well, thank you. And it's lovely to be here and to um, feel the first church energy again. It's been quite a while since I've been through these doors. Um, but when Ian and I first met and um, became involved together, one of the first people that I met was Reverend Joyce Jackson. And again, just as the things that have already been mentioned, um, I just remember her and her posse moving like a troop everywhere, everywhere together. We would always run into them at the conferences. We would come to New York. I remember her ordination ceremony was so lovely. And afterwards, um, everybody was packed together at a long table in this restaurant where everything was really, it was so New York. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and just sharing in that levity and um, wonder and joy of being. Um, I remember her mother, Beulah, as well, um, as Reverend Loretta mentioned, and how they were inseparable um, until her passing. And um, it, it was like, if you saw one, you saw the other. And um, it was just such a wonderful thing when everyone came for our wedding and... Um, 
I don't know. It was just like my, it, it helped me with my connection to my husband as I was getting to know him to meet his friends and see where he had come from. And um, I think of her dearly and often, and um, she was a blessing to us all. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. Uh, that was lovely. Uh, I don't know if Dr. J. Scott Neal is on the call. Is he? If not, I'll speak for him. It would be under J or Scott or Neal. <laughs> One of them. Okay, well, he spoke to me earlier. Um, he spoke of his love for Joyce and um, spoke to me about Joyce's relationship with her mother. This was just said and how important it was and how wonderful Joyce's mother was as well. Um, Dr. J had great love, affection, esteem for Joyce, and he's not really wonderful with his technology, so he maybe can't figure out how to <laughs> manage the call, but he certainly is with us in spirit, wanting to extend those wishes. Um, I would like to call Celia next to come up. Uh, Celia is a great force in our center for good and uh, was especially, uh, Joyce was especially fond of you, Celia. Would you like, like to come up and say a few words? Yes, I... I'd like to thank everyone for coming to this celebration, whether in person or virtually. And I, at this point, would like to um, conclude my comments. I, I did say something on the um, testimonial page about how meaningful Reverend Joyce's example has been to everyone in this teaching. And I, I just, I want to hear what everyone else has to say. And so I will finish. And thank you all. Okay. Um, we have Rob in the audience. It's me. Come on up. Sure. This is another person who's been at it for years, right? One of the originals. I would say so. Okay. Well, <laughs> Thank, well. You. Thank you. You're very welcome. It's true because um, my parents both went through the ministerial training program. And uh, I was introduced to at, at uh, Town Hall uh, when uh, Dr. Barker was doing services there. And I was in, I was in the youth group from the time I was around 12. So that probably makes me the longest living person uh, in the, on the planet that has uh, been involved in this teaching. And uh, right now I'm, I'm grateful to be involved with Loretta's uh, classes and teaching and enjoying that very much. But thinking back to the ministerial training program that I went through, along with you guys uh, and with, with Joyce, I must say that it was, was it every Tuesday night or Wednesday night that we had class? Right. But one of those, one of those. And uh, when I would walk into the room on 48th Street where the classes were held, I must say that the first person I looked for was Joyce, because she was always the most welcoming, loving, and the best hug of everybody. Just such a wonderful person. So I would immediately worst Joyce and want to go, hi, Joyce, how are you doing? And all obviously would get the, the most wonderful response back. Second, or second place was Ian. So it was, uh, it was a wonderful experience to be uh, brought up in this teaching and, uh, you know, always, uh, always a challenge and always uh, requires effort to maintain it and try to always be in that consciousness that we all learned about. And, you know, I'll go out, 
I'll go out the same way, still working at it, still trying and uh, still involved and really wonderful to share this experience with all of you and remembering her and all the goodness that she brought to us all and to, to the world we live in. So thank you for letting me share that. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, Kath, we have Kat, we call her Kath, and she's usually on with Hi, Kath. Hi, Kath. Would Hi. you? Hi. Um, I just wanted to speak directly to Joyce and just express my gratitude for just her total givingness, um, her kindness, her decency, her willingness to be present um, and really get what you, what's going on for others, um, for her range of knowledge from sports to, I mean, she had a range of knowledge that was amazing to me and always just took me by surprise, but then not really, I guess. And for those beads that she always wore, you always wore around her neck. I love that. She always had a radiant smile and she was just beautiful in so many ways. And, you know, I hope you're there with mom because I know how much you loved her. And just thank you, Joyce. Thank you. Thank you, Kat. Are you, are you with Seth or are you by yourself? No, I'm here. I'm here, Reverend Greg. Hi, Seth. Would yes. Like yes. I mean, as a, as a well-educated person and a person who had a great range of knowledge as a librarian, uh, she really brought a lot to the table and radiated a sense of goodness and uh, decency and warmth and was really just by her being itself without any necessary expression uh, conveyed a wonderful sense of uh, of spirit and goodness and I know that uh, wherever she is now uh, she's radiating that same wonderful spirit of goodness and that wonderful uh, sense of, of, of decency and goodness uh, which is so much appreciated thank you thank you Seth for being with us I appreciate it uh, Let's go to our other Shirley. This is Shirley from Staten Island. Would you like to share? Hi, Shirley. Yes, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, how, marvel how marvelous it is to be here and hear all of the wonderful tributes to Reverend Jackson and learning some more about her that I didn't know. But to echo what has been shared, you know, what stands out to me is her love for her mom. I witnessed that firsthand. And even when I would look at, we would call her Mother Jackson, as she was, and if, uh, Reverend Jackson was um, giving the, you know, uh, of speaking at the service that particular day and how her mom would look at her with such love and, you know, such caring that she exhibited to her mom. Um, and uh, some of you might not know, well, people who know me from the, the church may not know this, but she officiated at my wedding back in 2007. Um, and without hesitation, when I approached her about officiating and um, when I told her her it was in New Jersey, you know, at the, the reception hall, everything was going to be in one and she's like, I'll get there. But I was able to organize uh, transportation for her to get to um, the reception site. And I remember her dancing at my wedding. So just very warm, very loving, very uh, a calming uh, spirit, um, just an all around beautiful person. And 
Um, I had wanted to come into the center in person, um, but was unable to today, but I didn't want to miss this. And I'm so happy that I'm able to participate uh, via Zoom and to hear all the wonderful things about Reverend Joyce and to add to that. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Shirley. It's always great to have you with us. Uh, I believe um, Deborah Starr might be on the call. Would you see? I just you passed her name. Or maybe it's another Deborah. Deborah Starr Reed, or no? No, it's gone. Okay, uh, let's ask. Uh, oh, she's there. Hello. Thank you. I am so privileged to have been on this celebration for Reverend Joyce. Um, I'm going to call carry this in my heart and mind with me. And uh, thank you, thank you all for sharing and. <laughs> Um, letting her spirit live with us still. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. I had a different Deborah, but thank you. Thank yes. you. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about Bradley, who's here in the flesh? Would you like to say hello? Sure. Come on up. Say a word or two, whatever you'd like. Hey, everybody. I hope you're having a good afternoon. Um, I just want to say Joyce was a really cool lady. Uh, she would do great. On, uh, excuse me, who wants to be the millionaire? She had a photographic memory on a lot of topics, and I love talking the Yankees with her. She was a big fan of uh, Jorge Posada, Mariano Rivera, and uh, we used to, excuse me, talk after we uh, over at the Lincoln Center, we'd sit around and have a few beers or coffees or whatever after that. And just really enjoyed talking to her. She was really friendly, kind-hearted, and empathetic. And even though I don't know her that well, I'm kind of emotional. I just feel bad that she's passed away. So I'm sending all my, all my best to all her friends and loved ones. Thanks for your time. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. So we learn more about Joyce, <laughs> coffee and beers, <laughs> and the Yankees. Oh, that's great. Um, we have Antoine with us. Antoine, would you like to come up? Antoine. I'm sorry. Yes. It says Antoine, but it, Antoine, how do how do I say it properly? Yeah. How do I? Say, Antony. Antony, come on up. Whatever you'd like to do. Um, I'm here in the here in the flesh, but I didn't think I was going to be asked to speak. But um, and I, I really didn't know Reverend Joyce terribly well. But um, obviously, it, she was a wonderful, lovable, wise person. But the, I, I just remember an interchange I had with her because I, this was at Lincoln Center, and I usually sat on the back row, I don't know why, but, and I couldn't hear everybody. And, but her voice would come sailing through and I, I stopped her afterwards and I asked if she, I, I was an actor, if she were an actor. And, and she said, no, 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 not at all. It's from teaching the children. So I don't know whether that was at the library or in schools or, or whatever, but um, I'm just so grateful that I knew her. And on the way here, just sort of synchronicity, I was walking down 85th Street and somebody had put out a pile of books. They were all classics and books on philosophy and whatever. And I, I thought, well, this is appropriate. <laughs> and so I, so I got a couple and I don't need any more books. But thank you all. And um, I loved her. She was wonderful. Okay, let us, Vivian has been a practitioner for many years. I think she's on the call. Vivian, would you like to share? Yes, yes, thank you. I would like to, to share a few words for my friendship with my friendship with uh, Joyce Jackson. In, how can I start? In desiring a far greater understanding of the truth of being, I was drawn to the teaching of science of mind 
where I had the great honor and privilege to meet Joyce Jackson. At the time, we both attended classes year after year and became good friends and shared the continued unfoldment of expansion in consciousness and loved to talk about Ernest Holmes' philosophy that empowered us. We both believed in the ideas, the meaning, and the demonstration of the principles taught. Joyce and I enjoyed discussing the ideas, and sometimes we would talk for a long time, very long time on the phone, and it only felt like a few minutes. I remember in our third year class, Joyce was called to give a spiritual mind treatment. And at the time it was Dr. Grayson, Stuart Grayson, our pastor and our teacher. When Joyce finished her treatment, Dr. Grayson stood up and said, now that is a treatment. <laughs> Jokingly, he said, class is over, let's go home. Those are the wonderful moments that I remember with Joyce. I remember the magnificence of her presence, her joyful childlike laughter, she made us all laugh. She was full of life, full of vigor, full of love. When she gave classes, we were all looking forward to attending and we all left inspired by her wisdom and her interpretation of the lessons. Our friendship continues to unfold with respect and appreciation for the sharing of the teaching, the inspiration of the ideas that we continuously shared with each other. She was a model of fairness and integrity. Joyce's love for her beloved mother, for her teaching, and for helping people never ended. She was loving, kind, patient, and compassionate. Joyce always had a comforting word or spiritual idea to uplift whoever came to her for support or guidance. We always left from a class or from a phone call uplifted and inspired. Joyce was a great teacher and a treasured friend. I am truly grateful for her love and friendship for so, so many years. Everyone who knew Joyce will never, never forget how she made them feel. Joyce, you made everyone feel special more than they believed about themselves. She is a light in our world. She is a light in our hearts. We never, we will never forget you, Joyce. We love you as your, as your loving beloved mother, the how much you loved her, we love you. As you move forward in life, love and light, we continue to celebrate your life and the memories we hold in our hearts. Thank you for being a light you brought to this world and to us all with love and gratitude. I give thanks for this experience with Joyce, and so it is. Thank so you. it is. So it is. Thank you, Vivian. That was wonderful. Uh, Thank you. Let us go to Linda. Hi, Linda. Would you like to share? Yes, I would. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Greg. First of all, it was absolutely wonderful. Wonderful presentation and wonderful to hear all the sharings about Joyce, you know, I've been thinking all week about, about more than all week, but uh, about what I wanted to share about Joyce. And so much of it has been said, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, I do remember being back on 48th Street, a million things I remember, but um, I remember seeing her on Sunday services with her mom, uh, Beulah, Mother Jackson, we used to call her as right. And her, her mom was very petite and Joyce was always towering over her and um, towering next to her. But her mom had that special radiance also. You know, you, you just couldn't help feeling like Mother Jackson was, you know, the seed level of everything. She just was also so radiant. And Joyce was incredible. I, I, all the things that have been said, I'll try not to repeat. The one thing that I want to um, remember her for is I, I have done a lot of spiritual work, a lot of things that might blow other people away, you might say. But one day, Joyce did a treatment for me. And I asked her, I said, you know, well, why is it like this? Or something about why. And she said to me, 
the obvious? She said to me, because you accept it, you know? And that word accept, it just blew me away in that moment. There, there was something about Joyce that could just zone in and tune in to what really needed to be said. And she just said it with such depth and with such, um, I don't know, ability, I guess, to, you know, to bring out the teachings as well as zone in. She just was amazing. I just, I thank God I met her and I thank you all for sharing. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. That's wonderful also. Uh, let us uh, go to um, Barbara Watts. I haven't seen in a long time. Are you there, Barbara? How are you? I think you're in a different state. Barbara, are you still on the line? <clears throat> and let us then move to um, Ronald. Good afternoon, Ronald. Would you like to share? <clears throat> and after that, we'll go to Viola. I realize everybody is able to manipulate the phones and all, but we'll go through the names. Uh, Pat is on the call. Would you like to share, Pat? Yes, hi, thank you. Um, I just uh, remember Joyce as being somebody I could so easily speak to. Uh, any questions I had about religious science or um, and the connection of spirit within myself, it was just so wonderful to feel that I could so easily express myself to her and she, her information was always so important to me because I was able to connect with that as well. So I just wanted to relate that and uh, give thanks for the life that she had here with us all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, let us go to uh, Nancy, if Nancy would like to share. Nancy, then Frank. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm Hi. unmuted. Hi. Yes, um, I'm Reverend Nancy Hazard, if you didn't know. And I'd like to say something about Joyce, uh, because my ministry right now is as a pastor in a congregational church. And congregational is very much like religious science. And my sermon or speech today was about joy, happiness. And I presented it by talking about Joyce Jackson, how she was so loving and giving of her time and her talents. And she was forgiving. She was one of the most joyful people I know, except for maybe her mother too. So because of Joyce, I had a wonderful Sunday talk today, and it made me feel closer to Joyce, even though I haven't seen her for a little while. I'm very thankful that she was my, my friend and my colleague. That's all. Thank you. That's Reverend Nancy uh, Hazard. I haven't seen you since the convention a while ago, but I trust <laughs> you're well. And, uh, Yes, we do it. I'm doing fine. Thanks. Great. I did speak with Reverend Dr. J. I don't know what happened to his connection, but I'm sure he's sending his love as well. Uh, let's go to Francis. Francis, would you like to share? And after Francis, we'll go to, to who's there? Anyone else that wants to share, it's going to need to send you a message on the Zoom because I can't otherwise know. <laughs> uh, we have a Tony on the call. Hi, Tony. Hi. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Um, I, I did write something in the uh, testimonial, uh, but I wanted to be brief um, or try to be brief here. Uh, I shared a lot of the uh, feelings and sentiments expressed uh, of other people. Uh, you know, she, she was such a beloved 
person, uh, reverend, teacher for me, and, and I know for many of you, uh, as you've said, and, and I was a student uh, of hers, uh, you know, for many years. Uh, but one thing I, I will add, she, when I, I, when I first saw her, I really felt she's a natural healer, just a natural. Um, and she had such a healing presence, uh, a powerful healing presence. It brought out my own healer within, because, uh, of course, that is part of our teaching, uh, you know, uh, self-healing. And uh, I've learned so much from her over the years in so many ways and on so many levels. She just Im modeled and embodied the spiritual teachings uh, uh, that we were learning, uh, that we learned. Uh, in my heart, uh, I will always love and remember you, Reverend Joyce, and uh, your generous, wise, and healing spirit. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Dell is on the call. Hi, Dell. And after Dell, James. And then Janetta, you're new here. Would you like to come up and say hello? while these other people are trying to connect. Hi, Janetta. Hi. Um, I didn't get to meet Reverend Joyce Jackson, but she sounds like a phenomenal woman um, with characteristics I would love to emulate. Um, and she just lived a wonderful life of service and just of love and with joy and passion. So I'm, I'm just thankful for being here and just soaking all of this up and getting to meet all of her friends, well, some of her friends and some of her family in the lives that she touched. I'm just grateful for this experience. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Janetta, for being with us. Janetta has been doing some wonderful work uh, helping at the center in different ways. She's a writer and multi-talented person. Thank you for being with us. Now, I think I have a person that's got a business name up there, uh, Mr. Wealth or Ms. Wealth. Uh, would, you, <laughs> would you like to say hello? Access Wealth? OK. And then there's James on the call. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, sorry about that. It's, it's really, that's what my business is, Access Wealth Nation. But I'm Reverend Yana B. Woodhouse from Imani Center for Spiritual Growth under the tutelage of Reverend Fran. Great. And, uh, Great. Welcome. Yeah. And Reverend Joyce was integral in my growth at Imani. And uh, definitely, you know, with her and Reverend Fran, I'm where I'm at today. Uh, Reverend Joyce did an awesome uh, speech for me when I got ordained. And uh, I'm just gonna miss her so much. I miss her mother first, you know, when she passed, she was so supportive of Imani. And uh, just speaking, if Reverend Fran hasn't spoken, just to say they were the best of friends and when you, they, they, they were buddies. And I remember Reverend uh, Ian also. So we're holding post at Imani. And today's word we used was love. And that's what we have for Reverend Joyce. Thank you. Thank you. I believe it's now I want to go to the audience because I believe I've called on everyone, but I'm not sure. Have I missed anyone? Is there anything anyone else would like to say? Okay, so I'm gonna invite Loretta to come up and help me close this out. Come on up. Ian, you wanna come up too? We'll get all the reverends together. Come on up. 
Oh, Judith, I forgot about you. You can come up too if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to close out. I want to just oh. say my piece. Well, oh, well, well, well let, let's do. I forgot. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Okay. I'm trying to follow, follow the bouncing ball here. I'm sorry. Um, you can stay because it's very short. Um, I don't have anything new really to add ex to everything that everyone has already said about her. Um, I knew her, we knew each other for over 35 years. And she was a teacher to me who became a friend um, we were in classes together, and in my textbook, I would write, oh, ask Joyce, ask Joyce, because I didn't want to ask um, Dr. Grayson about something I didn't understand, but she understood it all. Uh, she was very clear. She was very centered all the time. She loved spirit. She loved the science of mind, and she loved people. And she felt like her mission in life was to serve spirit, to teach the science of mind and to help people. And that's what she did till the end of her days, because I was one of the ones that we spoke every week for a few months. And, 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 and I loved her very much and I'll miss her. But as Dr. Ian said, it's grad she graduated into something better, more fantastic than we could even imagine with our minds. So she's there. And that's what we're working towards while we're here. That's it. That's it. That's wonderful. All right. Let's bring the ministers up. Ian, mm -hmm. Reverend Ian, Reverend Loretta. And I'm just going to start by knowing that we're centers of God activity and we're grateful for what we know. We're grateful for the teaching. We're grateful for one another and we're grateful for Reverend Joyce Jackson. And then I'm going to go to this young man and then yes. Yes, Loretta. And knowing that there is just one activity, it's a divine activity. It is spirit in us and through each one here. And so knowing that spirit in its movement, in its action, in its evolution, has moved on in the person of Reverend Joyce to a greater idea of itself and a greater expression of its magnificence. I stand in peace. I stand in memory of a dear friend. And I know that she has left us with the love and the will to take this teaching forward and to live, to live as true representatives of this beloved philosophy. Her teaching, her mentoring remains alive in as and through each of us. The spirit of God is now operating through each and every one of us here today. And each one knows, understands, and completely accepts that through this service, there is an outpouring of love, love in our hearts, love in our minds, and the love for Reverend Joyce Jackson. For Reverend Joyce Jackson touched our lives, blessed us, uplifted us, and inspired us. And through her teaching, she has blessed each and every person who is not only on the line, but here in person, each one of us, has been blessed knowing that there is the truth of our beings and the truth of our beings is the very essence of all that we are. We honor you, Joyce, and we know that wherever you are, that you have blessed each and every one of us in a magnificent way. And with gratitude and love for the wonderful way that you have touched us and blessed us, we say, thank you, God. The word is in the law. It is done. There is a demonstration of love, and love is in the law for all of us to enjoy because Joyce lived a blessed life. This word is the truth in the law, so be it. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you. I know that there is but one life, and that life is the life of God, Spirit the one without a second. That is the life of Reverend Joyce. That is the life of each one here. That life is perfect, whole, and complete. 
in its knowing of itself and in its expressing of itself as Reverend Joyce and each one here, that life is eternal. So Reverend Joyce's life, our lives are eternal because we live in the eternal spirit, in the one mind, in the eternal energy of the creator. Spirit has called its expressions of itself good and very good. So each experience where it be here or later is good because it is the outpicturing of spirit that is life eternal. Reverend Joyce lived spirit's life in its perfection, in its wholeness, in, in her duty, in her choice as a teacher, as a lover of people, as an expressor of good. And she had her heart and her arms and her heart wrapped around each person. So everyone that came to her saw spirit speaking to them, loving them, supporting them through her. And she decided to be the light that she was. And she lived that light and illumined herself uplifting each one of us that she worked with, that she spoke about. God, the good, the absolute is all there is, and it is eternal. Therefore, Reverend Joyce is eternal in the expressing of the good that life is as God expressing itself. This is her truth. This is our truth. It is the truth that is known within the creative law of mind. And I declare that is manifesting each one here in a higher expressing of livingness and love and choosing the good to experience and to express and to share. This is the word already within the law. And so it is.